Hey guys, it's George back, Playlist Push YouTube channel. There's been a lot of fluff, a lot of heat going around on Twitter about Spotify, you know, how the editorial system works. A lot of questions left up in the air. You know, is there a human listening to your song when you pitch your song? Is an algorithm just dictating everything? So we're gonna take it all the way back to 2005. But we're gonna map everything out and explain exactly how the Spotify algorithm works. And we're just gonna go bit by bit, place by place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do it. Maybe cut that part of the intro. But. So how does the Spotify algorithm really work? That's what everyone really wants to know. After this artist, Sadzilla's song got placed on an editorial playlist and it turns out there was an error with the song. So it was just 29 seconds of the song being looped over and over again. And everyone was up in arms because they were confused as to how this song could get added to the very top of an editorial playlist and not have an actual human listening, checking the song, listening to the whole thing before it actually ended up on that playlist. So we're gonna go through all that and exactly why that happened and how that happened. So we'll go all the way back to 2005 at MIT where two young guns were working on their dissertation. Their names were Tristan Jahan and Brian Whitman. And that basically became the company known as Echonest. So Echonest is data processing, a data mining mining company that takes different genres of music, indexes it, can be used to create playlists and pull data on different songs and figure exactly where that song should fit when it comes to playlists and things like that. So I think in 2010, they raised around $7 million in financing and eventually got bought by Spotify in 2004 for 49 million euros, not US, euros. So the Echo Nest was acquired by Spotify and they basically had a product line that consisted of data of over 30 million songs. So they have all these songs indexed, know where they fit, know what they consist of when it comes to mood, genre, other adjectives, events that they fit with, all of that stuff. So Echo Nest is kind of twofold. Echo Nest is used to create playlists for Spotify curated editorial playlists, and it's also used to mine and find different songs that are a good fit for these playlists. So when it comes to Echo Nest and the Spotify algorithm, there's three key elements web crawling, data mining, and data signal processing. And I'm gonna explain how all three of these work and why your song is getting added to editorial playlists, maybe automatically or by human. Okay, so let's talk about web crawling. So web crawling is basically a bot or an automatic system that is scanning the internet for a certain signal or a certain piece of data. So this is why it's important if you're an artist and you're releasing a song, if you have certain data points that are coming off, like if you have um, an article that's written in a specific blog that is maybe mostly indie rock artists, that web crawler is gonna pick that up. And that's basically gonna give your song a point or it's gonna give it a leg up or it's just gonna add information to the algorithm that it can process later and eventually make a decision. So web crawling is looking for links, pictures, photos, press, videos, featured artists. There's an article that's written that mentions you and other artists they're gonna pick that up and that's gonna help them index that song easier. Okay, so let's talk about data mining. So data mining is basically when you have large amounts of information, let's, let's say like 60,000 songs that are being uploaded to Spotify each day. Um, there's certain code that's written so they can scan through all of these, this data and figure out certain anomalies or key differentiators, mainly just how different the song is from other songs. So they're, they're pulling out these songs and matching them with other songs that already exist in that database of 30 million songs. And then we have digital signal processing. So digital signal processing is mostly gonna be people that once your song is out, people that are adding the song to a playlist, people that are listening to the song repeatedly, and mainly actions that are being taken on the platform with your song. People are sharing the link, if it's picking up the link in different articles and things like that. So it's really based on data signals that users are throwing. A positive one would be getting your song added to a user-generated playlist. Even more would be getting added to, to 50 user-generated playlists. And this is kind of why TikTok is so important. TikTok really helps drive the Spotify algorithm because people hear this song, they're searching for it, they're adding it to their own playlist, and they're saving it or they're sending it to friends. Okay, so that's kind of in a nutshell how the Spotify algorithm works. And if you really think about it, it's very unrealistic to think that if you upload a song to Spotify and you fill out a pitch form that an actual human at Spotify is going to listen to the song 
and know exactly where to put it, those days are long gone. There's over 60, 50 to 60,000 songs that are uploaded to Spotify each day. I don't know how many of them actually go through the pitch form, but it's very unrealistic for a company, even like Spotify, that has 9,000 employees for someone to go through and listen to 10,000 pitches per day. It's just very unrealistic. So obviously the main element that's driving Spotify editorial placements really is the algorithm. And so the more you can do as an artist to throw off those positive data signals, get added to user generated playlists, gain some press that's very specific to your niche, being in articles that mention similar artists or artists that you wanna be related to, and that's also gonna help your fans also like. Those are all things to consider. For some people, I understand it's a bummer that Oh geez, you know, Spotify is just one big algorithm, but really that's the only way to do it. And that's really the only way to scale. So, I mean, obviously there's the major labels that have those direct relationships with Spotify where they go in the office, they sit down, they pitch the song and those songs obviously get added to today's top hits and some of those top marquee playlists like Rap Caviar, that does happen because those relationships are so tight. So as an indie artist, you know, the best thing you can do is really do everything you can do to signal that algorithm. And then also this goes back to how many songs you can release, right? So the more songs you can release and the more consistent you can be, get it out to an audience and get added to playlists, that's gonna give you a better chance to drive that algorithm and end up on those editorial playlists. So as an artist, if you get added to a Spotify playlist, even if something's wrong with your song or it's you know it's the wrong version or whatever, the worst thing you could do is call out Spotify and make it look like Spotify made a mistake when really it's an algorithm driving it and that's not good PR for Spotify. So if you wanna be in their good graces, you're probably better off to really just talk to your distributor because this sounds like a distributor error. The distributor delivered the wrong song to the platform and that's really where the key issue is here. So that kind of wraps it up guys. That's how the Spotify algorithm really works. If you have any questions, drop a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.